Okay. Well, I guess that means we're going to get started. Um, we'll go ahead and uh, introduce ourselves. My name is TJ Myhill. I'm an attorney here in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been on the last have her here. Good. Yes. No. Uh, I've been on the last several revenge porn panels, and there's been a little bit of a different state of the law every time, and there's a little different state of the law this time. So we'll be we'll be happy to cover that, but. Uh, that's that's who I am and what I do. Hello, um, my name is Rebecca Hiles. I'm a sex educator and dating coach uh, stationed up in Philly. Um, I do a lot of work, um, both as uh, both professionally working with people who are um, who are victims of revenge porn, um, who have you know are, are just trying to like get themselves back to normal. Um, but also, I uh, do cam work and I do porn as like my moonlighting job um, and so I have like a I feel like I have an interesting perspective on the, the porn industry and how it interacts with revenge porn as a whole uh, my name is Hayden Barnes I'm an attorney here in Georgia um, specializing in complex civil litigation I'm also staff counsel to the Georgia State Senate Judiciary Committee um, I'm a member of the First Amendment Lawyers Association an uh, EFF cooperating attorney and volunteer lawyer with Georgia lawyers for the arts. Um, my particular interests are privacy, security, um, open source, uh, do a lot on uh, Mac and iOS. Um, I've represented uh, anarchist collectives, NSA employees, uh, fantasy romance novelists, Native American tribes, um, and uh, adult actors and actresses. Yeah. All right, well, um, I guess let's just kick it off with saying where we are now. Right when we first had this uh, revenge porn panel, uh, Sarah Downey and I sat up here and told you guys that there is shit for laws out there. Uh, nothing existed. If you had taken your own picture and it was a selfie, you had a copyright remedy, and maybe there was a right of privacy in your state that was pretty decent, and maybe there wasn't. And uh, that was pretty much it. Now, you know, in the last several years, states have passed laws. Some are better than others. Some are too broad, some are too narrow, and really there hasn't yet been a happy medium that makes everybody satisfied with the law. And as we sit here today, there is a bill uh, being passed through uh, the federal process to see whether or not we're going to have a federal revenge porn bill, but that bill, too, is getting challenged from both sides as being both too broad and too narrow. So. Who knows what we're going to end up with if it's going to pass. It didn't pass last time. So that's that's the state of the law. We've gotten a lot more law. This is something that lawmakers are taking very, very seriously. Since we sat here and said zero states have a revenge porn law, 34 states plus D.C. plus the feds have either passed or are trying to pass a revenge porn law. But, you know, they're, they're again, they're all varying degrees of effectiveness. So the current lay of the land is... There's a lot of law out there, and who knows if any of it works. So Georgia does have a revenge porn law. Um, it mirrors um, some model language in other states. Um, it specifically prohibits dissemination of uh, sexually explicit material that has the intention of um, emotionally uh, uh, harming or um, the, the exact language um, it, it narrows uh, harassment. Um, problem is, is what happens when it's not harassment? What happens when someone just takes it, puts it on one of these sharing sites? Um, what, what we'll see is a lot of these uh, bills through <coughs> all, all these states, including the federal proposed bill, there's still a lot to be figured out, uh, the various contours and nuances of these uh, statutes. One thing that's really that, that's really struggling uh, or, or making lawmakers struggle is that exact issue of intent, right? Is there intent? Is there a revenge intent? Is there a harassment intent? Is there a malicious intent? And intent is something we usually put in criminal laws. But at the end of the day, uh, what happens if there's not intent, right? If I rob you, I probably had the intent to rob you, right? I've proven that by taking your wallet and running away. But if I put your naked picture up online, did I intend to harass you? Did I intend to get revenge in some way? Or did I just think, cool, boobs, and put it up online? 
because that's not necessarily intent under some of these state statutes. Um, it was pointed out that we have not yet told you what revenge porn is. <laughs> so we should probably start there. Um, who wants to take a crack at revenge porn? Well, 34 state legislatures have tried. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. All right. Well, here's the problem, right? If you actually go out and read any of the literature on revenge porn, nobody actually likes that phrase. It's the one we all use because it's what we think of, right? We think of the idea of you send a picture to your significant other, and then you break up, and then they get pissed off, and then they show that picture to your family and coworkers. And that's revenge porn, right? But what about the people who just hack your iPhone and get your pictures and throw them up online because, hey, boobs. What about the people who, you know, take pictures of people who aren't their significant others and don't have any revenge intent? So there's lots of phrases being kicked around like non-consensual pornography. Um, and um, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the other one, but it's... Similar to that, is yeah. non consensual or, 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 I don't know, but some other type of pornography. But it's not, not your choice to put your photograph up. Your, your photograph, your image, your video, whatever, is up online without your consent and sometimes without your knowledge. And that's, that's what we're dealing with. States are trying to find a way to criminalize or or, or create remedies for people who just go online one day and suddenly find out that the things they thought were private are now very, very public. And how do we handle that is exactly what... Well, I imagine it doesn't help in a lot of ways um, when it comes to uh, coming forward and, and sort of talking about talking about you know your face, your naked body on these sites. Oh. Um, seriously? Yeah, I know. I'm sitting on can I? Can you hear me now? <laughs> like, really close up. <laughs> um, I suppose that it doesn't really help in socially when we we don't have this title for exactly what type of porn it is, and we identify it as revenge porn, um, because I feel like regardless of whether or not it's the intent to get revenge, it is the intent to discredit someone <laughs> as an individual, um, specifically because if I'm not mistaken, I think a lot of revenge porn typically like affects women like overwhelmingly so yeah. Yeah. yeah um and so in a lot of ways then you have a lot of these same issues because what happened when the selfies of the celebrities got leaked mm -hmm. well why were they taking naked photos why were they having a sex life god forbid that they were having a sex life they are celebrities and should never have sex ever but we we're going to market them as sexual objects so that's a totally different thing. Um, but we have this sort of attitude where people come forward and they talk about their their issues and their problems and then they're dismissed or they're shamed or you know whatever. And those people who are dismissed and shamed aren't likely to push it, push the issue further and just sort of like hope for the best. Um, and they don't always have the ability to afford a lawyer mm -hmm. either when you, I mean, you can take that into another layer of the like wage gap and so forth. and all sorts of social justice like webs of issues but it, it sort of creates like a like a like a cycle that it, it can always just keep happening because there's no there's not enough people coming forward to talk about it and to change it well, i think there was a half million dollar judgment in a case in, out of texas a few weeks ago and if those keep happening i think lawyers will start taking a lot more of those cases <laughs> right well <laughs> here. certainly hope so okay that's thanks okay I would like to ask all my panelists to please pull your microphone right up to your lips because apparently we can't get it. <laughs> no, I know, I understand, but I just, we keep, I apparently we all keep moving away from them is the problem. So everybody, all right. everybody get on, everybody get on your mic. All right. So here's um, the, 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 the follow up on that though. One of the real problems that I see with the law that's out there is that we don't really have a civil remedy for a lot of these state laws. Pretty much every state law, who's, including Georgia, who's passed a, a, a revenge porn or, or non-consensual or inconsented you know, pornography law, who's made it illegal to share naked photos of other people, have done it to be a, a criminal act, a misdemeanor or, or a felony. And that's great for people who can't afford lawyers, because I can just call the police department and say, hey, this is happening, and this is... 
I told you, every <laughs> single year. And that's if you can get law enforcement. But to, but that's right. That, that that goes. But the, the 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 two problems with that are one, it's just a misdemeanor, and it's not really a big deal to anybody except that person whose picture is is up there. So when you call up the police department and say, "Hey, I really want you to go arrest my ex boyfriend who's throwing pictures of me up everywhere," yeah, we'll get around to it. We've got you know murderers and kidnappers and bank robbers to deal with, and it just never happens. The misdemeanor problem doesn't really arise but there's no civil remedy in a lot of these states which means you can't come to me and hire me and have me sue the guy for damages or not for damages we have to look to restraining orders and and, and injunctions and other things like that that don't give me a way to get a uh, an attorney's fee out of a, out of a uh, you know a, a, a judgment that's awarded so we get a lot of cases we, we got a call from a girl yesterday who you know has a, a an ex who's putting things online that she doesn't really want anyone to see but what's a remedy you know she can come in she can hire me we can write letters we can get restraining orders we can call the police we can do these things but we can send letters to instagram we can send letters to facebook there's a lot of things we can do but there's still not really any kind of great solution So hotel, you, but she obviously did not consent to that. But are you saying that the difference is, is that my girlfriend willingly sends me something, I break up with her, and that's the element? Not, not necessarily. Did you, did you want to cut that? I would say that she very clearly had a cause of action and got you know, an award for it. Right. I, th- I think she got negligence. Against the against hotel. the hotel, right? I think it was a hotel employee. The guy yeah. Had nothing. The, the guy, no, he wasn't. He okay. Was a, he was a um, out, he was a, a fan. They gave him the room number when he checked in. He said that he knew her, uh-huh. and he, he they said I, I need to be near her. He got it and he did it, but nevertheless, he, he did sue the hotel, but he had a remedy for it. I'm just curious. Well. That no, that's a, I mean, that's a big difference. That's it. That's it. You get a judgment against the hotel for negligence, not against the guy for the act. Also, there's always other things that go into this. Again, when we first sat here three years ago, four years ago, when we had our first revenge porn panel and there were no state laws on this. We were looking to what laws, what, what privacy and rights of publicity laws each state had. Georgia, for example, has very good rights of publicity laws because we have Martin Luther King. Tennessee has some of the best in the country because Elvis. Um, You know, California and and New York have lots of celebrities, so they have pretty good laws. But Wisconsin, you know, not so much. Um, So it depends on your own state and where you are and what the rights of privacy or right of publicity might give you for a cause of action as well. Um, So negligence against the hotel, stalking against the individual, um, rights of privacy, rights of publicity, all of those things might give rise to claims. But but again, even even in the states with the best rights of publicity claims, there's a very big difference between Aaron Andrews and, you know, the girl who called me. So it's it's not a So the, what the hard there's several aspects that are hard about this. Um, yeah. Defining defining what revenge porn is in the law, having it prosecuted or finding a lawyer to sue, dealing with the emotional issues of having that done to you. Um, the uh, you know people have been sharing intimate things between each other for years. I mean a long time. So it's not so much the voluntary aspect. It's it's the going out and doing something with it is what is is the privacy violation and doing something with it that causes 
emotional embarrassment or <coughs> harassment is where the criminal laws have been targeted. Um, that's that's the crux. And that you know the the the. The big issue now and why this has become such an issue is, of course, the ability to make it so very public, right? The, I'm a Gen Xer. If I wanted to send somebody a naked picture of me, it was on a Polaroid, and I would hand it to them. <laughs> and they would look at it, and if they wanted to share it with their friend, they had to hand them the Polaroid. And it couldn't be shown to hundreds of thousands of people, you know, with a click. So the privacy issue, the, the, the problem that comes out of what you're saying, the problem of that fact that I'm the one who took that Polaroid and handed it to someone to begin with, and then they handed it to someone else, shouldn't I have foreseen that? That's part of the issue with drafting these laws. And it, it certainly goes to the shaming issue that Rebecca talked about a second ago. I mean, you know, oh, well, you shouldn't have taken these naked pictures. Why are you even taking naked pictures? Why should you, why should you ever have those to begin with? Why are you sharing them? That, that's part of what makes this a complicated issue for lawmakers to address. But it's, it really boils down to the privacy issue and how far I think that picture is going to go. It's one thing for me to give it to you. It's another thing for you to give it to your friend. And then it's another thing entirely for you to give it to your friend and, by the way, every other person in the United States. So that, that's the, the issue that we're now trying to address. And one of the things that I would question in a lot of this is that when I go on, when I go to work, my night job, right, and I turn on my camera or I, you know, take that video and mail <coughs> it out to that random stranger on the internet, um, I sign paperwork to be on those sites. I sign paperwork to have, to like explicitly say that yes, 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 <laughs> I would like my naked body to be on the internet. No, no, I'm not lying. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm of sound mind and body. I would just like my naked body on the internet, and that's cool. Um, so I, I'm wondering, you know, if there, there's no, you can post these things on these sites, but there's no sort of moderation for them, and there's no sort of, um, and I know I have a friend of mine who, um, her, it was very much the same. She sent naked pictures to her boyfriend. They'd been together for like five years. They were going to get married, and she was like, nah, I'm not feeling this, and she broke up with him. And then a week later, she's getting calls from her mom who's, like, hearing from, like, her pastor at her church and, like, her siblings about how all her naked photos are on this website and on the Internet. And here's the links to it. Why is her pastor on that site? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and there's all of these all of these different things where uh, – and luckily her, her dad was a lawyer, so that shit was gone real fast. Sorry. Real fast. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it, it was definitely that, that moment where it's like – you should have some there should be something to like approve that these are your photos to say that these are your photos to say that you have the ability to be posting these photos and in some way to be able to track it back to you um i don't know if anybody's familiar with a site called fetlife um i heard a giggle <laughs> um fetlife is a, a fetish site um that's sort of it's like the facebook for kinky people sort of <laughs> Um, but on there, when you put a photo up, you have to certify that you're allowed to use that photo. And if it's not, they will come and yell at you and they will take that photo down. If they find out that that's not a photo you're allowed to have up there, they will kick you off the site. Yeah, it's a, it's a Napster problem. You know, people are realizing that digital means easy, mm -hmm. unlimited. I think I'm too young for Napster. Okay. Um. <laughs> Bit wow, torrent. and I was bit back torrent. to Polaroid. It's a bit torrent. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Polaroid was this camera that popped open. <laughs> and you shut it. There's no additional costs to making hundreds of thousands of copies. That's the problem we run into. I think we have questions. Yeah, I was wondering, Talking is the there box. any way to... Talk into the box. Oh, is there any way to approach this as an issue of image rights? Is there some way to capitalize on what we've got in the entertainment industry in general so that individual people can somehow file their own image rights and just like with a DVD, okay, it's fine for you to watch in the home, but you can't show it to people that might have the ability to profit from it. Most of these sites have ads. Is there any way to approach it as an image rights and distribution issue? Well, you have a copyright in those photos mm -hmm. and you can sue for damages under those copyrights. You can sue for more if you put little C on it. But from uh, the standpoint, I'm sorry. Well, from the standpoint of because there are all these confounding issues, like you said, of sort of judgment and social shame, I, can you make it more like a uh, just a business proposition that everyone can somehow f 
file their own image rights for themselves and then there's a way to actually have a more mechanized ability to pursue things if there's a, a barrier in terms of people not wanting to report, pursue litigation, pursue punishment on a criminal end, but it, then it becomes just more of a financial fine. I don't know mm -hmm. how that would work, but mm -hmm. would it be an avenue to pursue or not? Well, that's where you get into the, the rights of publicity we were talking about a second ago. That, that, that's, that's what those are, is the right to publicize your own image. The right to privacy is the flip side. That's the right to be private in your own image. And those are creatures entirely of state law. And so every state has their own law on that too. And, and again, some states are very, very good and some states are not. Um, and one quick point on copyright. Copyright is a great remedy if you're the one that took the picture. Yeah. If you took a selfie and you sent it to somebody, well, then you do have copyright rights on that image and you can certainly take, uh, you know, take remedies under the Copyright Act to either both get that picture taken down or sue for damages. The problem is, and this is something that Sarah and I were talking about years ago, is that, that that's something that only applies to the images you take. Because if I take a picture of you, then I own the copyright. And not only then do you not have a remedy for injunction or, or, or damages, but you can't even tell me to take it down because I'm the one who has the copyright rights to share that or distribute that as I see fit. And that's where we have to see whether that's in conflict with your rights of privacy, rights of publicity, or some other some other right that prohibits me from sharing the image because you're in it. And, and again, we fall into whether or not those are effective in, in each state. In a lot of ways too, um, I wonder about the efficacy of having like these sorts of things in place. A lot of the people, if not the majority of the people on the, uh, not the receiving end of the, the damaging end of revenge porn, um, they're in their 20s their late teens, early 20s. We've got 16 and 17 year olds who still don't understand the concept that they can't share naked photos with each other because that's child pornography. I'm not sure that like a 20 something, it's certainly not a 20 something who then finds out that their naked photos are online. I just, and I have seen this because I don't know that there's the same kind of emotional processing that's going to like kick into their brains to say, okay, what are my legal options here? As opposed to, well shit, I'm trying to be a teacher, I guess I have to change my major because I will never be able to get a job like this. And I have watched it happen that teachers have had like revenge porn come out mm -hmm. um, and have lost their jobs. Like, no question. That was my question. What happens when you can prove you lost your profession or your job because the porn was posted against your will? Um, in in my case, the, um, the woman in question, she, uh, had a decent lawyer um, who went around and pulled it all down off the sites, um, but they couldn't do anything about the ex-boyfriend. Um, they couldn't even get a restraining order because uh, it's in Virginia. And in Virginia, there needs to be like an actual threat mm -hmm. against you and just being like, oh, I'm gonna post your naked photos online. Unless it's, I'm going to post your naked photos online because I want you to be in pain and also I'm gonna come to your house and throttle you in your sleep there's nothing that can be done. <laughs> they can just sort of say, well, if it happens again, just let us know. And that's pretty much all you got. Right. And that, and that, that's, I mean, this is pretty much it, right? I mean, because what, what, what are the remedies in, in, in this, it goes straight to the Napster issue that, that, that Hayden brought up, right? Once it's out there, it's out there and it's everywhere. And I can get it taken down off this site, but it's going to pop up over here. I'm going to take it down at that site, but it's going to pop over here. And it's a big game of whack-a-mole. And regardless of, how effective we are at taking it all down, you know, what happens to your job? Well, maybe there's some state law or maybe there's some, hopefully some law soon that will allow us to, to go sue for the damages of your, your lost job or your lost, you know, income on that if you got fired. But, you know, it, it's going to be a situation where I think we're just going to have to, as a society, learn to accept the fact that our teachers and, 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 and you know, other people may have things online that we don't necessarily want to have. I mean, it, it just, the truth is we all did something stupid in our 20s. It's just when I was in my 20s, it didn't show up on the internet. So when I went to go past the state bar, nobody said, show me all the stupid shit you did when you were 20. Now, uh, you know, I can Google my name and find all the stupid shit I do all the time. So it, it, it's just lucky that I own my own firm now. <laughs> So I don't have to worry about it. But it's, it's one of those things that I, I think it's sort of a twofold 
scenario of having to find a remedy for the problem legally, but it's also just going to have to be something where society, this has become such an issue, society is going to have to accept that there's a lot of stuff out there about everybody, and maybe we just ought to accept it. Right, but think of the children. Oh, the children, I say. That's a big one that comes up a lot, I think, um, when talking about this issue is the like concept, because it always ends up overlapping with the ha what happens if I lose my job, or what happens if I have revenge porn up on the internet, somebody put these photos up of me, and I can't <coughs> do anything, and now I'm worried that I'm gonna lose my job because of it. Um, and in a lot of ways, there is that entire conversation about like, well, what about the children? Like, what? It, it ties in a lot, and it's a lot of work that I do because I firmly believe that everything turns into sex at some point. Um, everything is about sex, except sex. Sex is about power. Uh, and and but that is where it comes down to is okay. Well, now we're thinking of the children. We now have to teach children that their adult human beings in their lives might actually have sex and, and make bad decisions and you know be fallible. <laughs> Um, and so I think that that's, that's something that needs to sort of be worked around, like outside of the legal system. I think that, that socially it's a lot of change that needs to happen in order to make this sort of, sort of thing a, oh, wow, you posted negative photos on me, as common as like, oh, you vague booked about me, <laughs> whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's a social change that needs to happen, but it needs to happen in a very, I don't know, different kind of way because it is sexually charged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that, that, that's right. I mean, unfortunately, there's really the, what we're talking about is the legal remedy to revenge porn, but your legal remedy to anything, honestly. I mean, whatever, whatever you hire me to do in, in, in business or civil litigation, your remedy doesn't really fix the problem. Your remedy is, well, that's too bad. Have some money. And maybe that makes it better and maybe it doesn't but at the end of the day it doesn't make you a teacher again it doesn't stop your partner from destroying your business and running off to the bahamas it doesn't stop your you know it, there, there's no real legal fix to pretty much any legal problem so you know all we're trying to do is figure out a way to keep it from being an uncontrolled problem but there's always going to be there's always going to be stuff that happens to people who are the victims of any crime, you know, or, or any legal wrongdoing that we can't fix with the law. So I was going to ask, well, first, Rebecca, I think Sigmund Freud would agree with you. Everything is about sex. So um, This is just a cigar. <laughs> yeah. um, but then, I was, and you already answered this, I was also going to ask you, so don't all porn star you know actors and actresses have to sign consent forms and then or at least you said you do at least um so then i was going to ask for the attorneys uh how many of these state laws focus around consent forms and can't one of the solutions be well all porn has to have a consent form attached to it for every person that appears in that picture or video and then all of the porn is illegal because it's non-consensual and then you go to jail when you sex your wife or girlfriend or well, boyfriend so or husband i mean or but there's there's a few more because I think what you're asking is not so much a sexting your partner, but more of a posting it on the internet, yes. right? Um, there are a number of sites that are sort of under the honor system, um, like Tumblr is one that's under the honor system, and regularly you'll find that porn on Tumblr has been sourced unethically. Um, if you're thinking of ethically sourced porn, just think about like ethically sourced like salmon or something, I like but just my instead of salmon, porn. just see like little dildos in the water. Because that's what I like to think about it when I think ethically source porn. Um, but it, it has that sort of feel to it of like to get it, you know, with approval and with permission and you're allowed to share these things. And there are a lot of sites out there that allow you to share like their shorter clips. Um, there are some sites uh, like Pornhub and like um, some of the other ones where you have to, you don't sign anything, but you do have to like check a box that says you're allowed to share this. Um, similarly, as it's like going on to like, I don't know, the Captain Morgan website and saying, yes, I am over 21, thank you. Um, <laughs> so it's something in that sort of family. But short of that, I mean, the for me, in terms of like what I would think would be great would be to have something that's basically just a button that says, yes, I am like able to share this. 
And that way, if it gets tracked back that it's not okay, that something was wrong, they can trace it to that email and just like handle it very quickly. Um, and because I've seen that on some sites, and there's some sites that have that. And if um, the site that I use when I'm camming is called um, extralunchmoney.com. Um, clever, right? Uh, <laughs> but in that, I can contact them easily. They have a contact easily. Like, I can just email them and say, look, everything associated with my account needs to be wiped immediately. And they'll do it. Everything. And that's not just everything. That is every link that I have up on the site. Um, and then, uh, like, they'll send emails out to the people who have purchased things from me saying, this seller is no longer available, which is a really, really nice thing <laughs> that they do to kind of, like, give like a quick and easy buffer of hey you can't do this anymore leave it alone so that goes back to the societal changes not so much legal changes those yeah. are those are social mores we can <clears throat> ad adapt and, and 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 push but any law that would require that would be held unconstitutional mm. without that does the law change society does society change the law it's chicken or egg chicken or egg they're pretty strict about first amendment law <laughs> yeah. yeah we haven't even gotten into first amendment law yet um We'd have to get into the details, but probably. Yeah, I mean, it'd be it, 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 that'd be unnecessarily restrictive on speech. But it also, I mean, the truth is that if you say, "Oh, we have to have consent to post it online," let's address that for a second. Certainly, no one has ever clicked that Captain Morgan button under twenty-one, right? I mean, that's <laughs> they would never do that. So that's a perfect solution. So no one will ever click this button improperly either. But when you when you get into the idea of the harm that comes from non-consensual pornography is not necessarily that it's online although that's a major issue that we we are addressing but what happens if i take it and i send a mass text out to my girlfriend's family uh co-workers job boss pastor who have you and you know i didn't put it online so i don't have to give consent to post it because i didn't post it i just took it and texted it to 400 people so you either have to make the law that prohibits that, in which case I have to sign a consent form before I sext my wife, or you don't have that be a part of the consent and then there's no protection. So that's what makes these laws so tricky. Um, with regards to the, uh, the civil remedies, um, I mean, it, it seems like that's kind of insufficient because I, I would imagine that a lot of these, the people who engage in this are pretty much judgment proof anyway, and there's no revenge porn insurance money to go after. Um, do any of the, these proposed state statutes or any of the ones that are in effect, do they hold the service providers liable in any way? No, the service providers are protected under Section 230, okay. which is the uh, a safe harbor for content uh, like YouTube like and that kind of thing, takedown yeah. requests. Um, now, if they do it on the job, you know, for their employer, then they're not judgment proof, which is what we saw in the um, ESPN case. Right. The other the other thing uh, that comes from that too is that the um, the the brain fart. I just completely <laughs> lost my train of thought. I absolutely just shut down. I don't even remember what we're talking about. Okay, move on. It'll come to me. Ready for the hello? Um, I have some questions. It's mostly um, geared towards uh, Miss Rebecca. Um, First off, well, maybe the lawyers can chime in too. Now, I'm, I'm aware, you know, you work in the porn industry and that's totally your choice. You have a right to that. Um, however, I also agree that, you know, just because you work in adult film doesn't mean you should have um, photos taken of you without your consent. You Damn know, that's, straight. That's exactly. Now, my question though is sort of, because you work in this industry, do you think that if, let's say, now you do your cam show and that's your consent, but let's say you were, and the same thing happened with ESPN and you were changing in a hotel room and someone was taking your photos against your will and putting them all over the internet. Like, are you, uh, do you think that, and maybe the lawyers can chime in, would she have less rights because she works in the sex industry? Like, I could see it being an issue, let's say you were a stripper, you know, most of the time you can't take photos in strip clubs, so would suddenly a, a dancer, would they have less rights or would they be, do you think in a court of law they'd be taken less seriously? Um, I think from like a social perspective, uh, they would be taken less seriously. For me, like, it's a very different instance for me specifically because I'm like, it's already on the internet. If you're taking photos of me that are naked, like, I probably didn't want to sell them anyways because you probably got a real shit angle. <laughs> right. 
Right. And I would have the ability to, like, go after that. I have a really wonderful, wonderful lawyer um, who just doesn't bat an eye. <laughs> Nothing I ask. You could actually show damages easier than the other people because you make a living. Right, exactly. Um, and that would affect my business model. But, um, I mean, beyond that, the only issue is that when I go forward with any sort of consent violation, whether it's something that it comes to from like photos shared without my consent, all the way to somebody grab my ass without permission, my sex work is immediately like brought to the forefront. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, are you sure you weren't asking for it? Like, are you sure? Are you sure that that wasn't something you were actually interested in? Because like, you know, you have a lot of sex with a lot of people and like maybe they just thought that you were really interested in them and like, I just, it, it gets me very frustrated because on my end, I'm saying that I'm like, no, just because I am like, I am bare ass naked in a swing club. And if you touch my ass, I'm going to deck you. <laughs> I am going to hit you. <laughs> and like that, but in a lot of ways, there, there are a lot of um, avenues when I, when I come forward with those sorts of things, whether it's photos that are shared online all the time. Um, you know, specifically things like things that I have shared specifically with partners who have then shared it with other people without letting me know. I've had like issues with that and they'd be like, oh, well, you know, you have it on FetLife. Like, why do you care? And it's like, because I like, I don't know, Karen. Well, it doesn't change the legal. It doesn't change the legal aspect. I mean, it's still it's if it's a crime, it's a crime. If it's a if it's a civil violation, it's a civil violation. It, it's going to be the same. It's just absolutely right. Whoever's on the other side is going to absolutely grill that issue because that's the social question, right? It's not it's not a question of whether or not there's the, the you know y you don't lose your rights by engaging in any certain you know type of work or activity but you you do fall victim just as you know people do all the time in in cases where people are you know where, where you're trying to convince the judge or the jury that you're just you know it, it, it's not really a big deal because of the social issues and it's the rape question of you know well what was she wearing what was the matter but it comes up because that's what that's that's where it boils down so that's the Again, the, the social versus the legal. I, I mean, haven't we even, like, you were, oh. you were talking, I was thinking about rape, right? Just because she's usually dressed. Hang on one oh, no, second. There's somebody in the back. Hang on. We've got a cue. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so in um, our day of age, or he said, she said, one, if somebody does accuse you of this, um, what type of defense do you have? And also, on the other side of that, how do you prove that someone actually was the person who did put it up? Well, that's a, that, I mean, that's a good question, right? Because that, that, again, goes back to the question of clicking the button and saying I have authority and saying I have to, but, but I use a fake email address or I use somebody else's information. Mm -hmm. it, it, that, that gets tricky. Um, you, you know, if, if you're the person who put it up, you know, and you use your own personal email or IP address or, or, or Reddit handle or whatever it is that you loaded it up under, obviously it's you. Or at least that's how we're going to start. Um, if you're the only person who had a copy of this picture and it's up, well, either you put it up or you gave it to somebody who put it up. So we're going to start with you. Um, so that's, that's how it, it boils down. And, and, and as far as defenses, I mean, if, if you can say, I guess I put it online because my, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband told me to, you know, then it's a, he said, she said, um, but if it's, I mean, if it goes up online, you have to have, if you put something online, then you definitely put something online. And if that's the criminal act in and of itself, as it is in a lot of these states, then you've already violated the law. So there really isn't a defense to, well, she said it was okay because you put it up, that act violates the law. And that's one of the reasons that, that people are challenging these kinds of laws and the constitutionality is because is that really a crime if I say it's perfectly okay for you to stick this picture of me online and you do does that make it a criminal act Th that's the issue that's how these things get so complicated <coughs>
over there. I'm sorry. But like, if you're going for carbonite or something like that, sorry. Okay. If you're using uh, carbonite or some sort of backup and then it gets hacked, um, what are the implications of that against you? So all the criminal laws, like I said, require that intent. And in Georgia, it requires the intent to embarrass or harass. So going back to your previous question, one of the possible defenses to the revenge porn criminal statute would be that you did not intend, either you did not intend to post it, which is hard to say if you uploaded it to Imgur, um, or that you didn't intend the um, uh, emotional aspect of it. And there's other defenses if, you know, you were sued under privacy torts and copyright law. Um, um, but um, I forgot where I was going with that. Anyway. What was your car the carbonite. Backup. Carbonite. No, I don't think so. But encrypt your backups anyway. Right. Right. I mean, if somebody steals it from you, then it's no different than stealing it from the person. I mean, if, if I steal a picture of you naked, or I steal a picture of you naked from Rebecca. I've still stolen the picture of you naked. I mean, ultimately, it's going to come to the person who's sharing the photo is the responsible party. And Please don't send me naked photos. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have, you know, if you have state laws that have the intent requirement, then obviously that's something you need to, to, to look through. If you have the state laws that criminalize just the activity, that's the ones that are being generally looked at as overly broad. So. But in terms of, the, it, it always comes down to the person who does the actual sharing. If, you're, if your account is hacked, then it's just, you know, then it's just the hacked celebrity account question all over again. Um, except probably a lot less people will download your picture than Jennifer Lawrence's. There was um, a question. Going back to the intent that keeps coming up, we discussed um, third party sites who aren't held responsible because, you know, they ask, are you over 21? or some other arbitrary checkbox. Um, what about the sites that have the intent of embarrassing those who are uploaded? For example, when the iCloud hack happened, Reddit had a subreddit that was basically dedicated to embarrassing those who were hacked. And now Reddit stepped in and deleted that subreddit and banned it. But what about other sites that don't have that? Can they be held liable? on a criminal or a civil front? So the good news is that all of the most of the dedicated revenge porn websites have been sued out of existence. Mm. It turns out people don't, j normal law-abiding people don't just wake up and decide to open a revenge porn website. <laughs> um, most of them end up getting thrown in federal prison on mail fraud, extortion, that kind of thing. <coughs> um, in terms of, uh, you know, as long as, long as the, so, uh, the ISPs and websites like Reddit and YouTube have somewhat blanket immunity as long as they respond to those reports when they're made in a pr prompt manner. Um, do you have anything? No, that, 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 that's it. I mean, the ISP, most of the ISPs are going to have uh, immunity. Most of your, your actual sites, you know, the, the, I think the question was, are they going to be liable under these intent laws? And the answer to that is probably no. But it's kind of like getting Al Capone on tax evasion, right? I mean, you don't get the, you don't get the Hunter Moores of the world on, on revenge porn posting necessarily. You get it on extortion or hacking or other, other crimes that they engage in because they're just generally sleazy people. Um, but certainly, are there sites up there that could host images that aren't supposed to be there that aren't then liable for any intent? Yeah, I mean, that's, that. yes. But then you fall back to the next level of who put them up there and what's the intent there. And that's why this intent issue is a big, a big stumbling block on a lot of these uh, revenge porn uh, crimes. Because the, 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 the acts, the criminal acts, how do you, how do you get over that intent requirement without putting a whole lot of stuff that ought to be revenge porn or, or non-consensual pornography outside the law. But how do you make it general enough without any kind of intent? I don't uh, know. Just, just quickly, you said that um, a lot of these previous uh, revenge porn sites got sued out of existence. I'm assuming that was before they started creating these um, causes of action. What cause of action did they use? Um, most of them got caught extortion. Um, oh. Extorting, I mean, you could pay $5,000. Right. Um, a lot of them, some of them were just up to other, had other criminal enterprises that brought yeah. them down. Um, there's one back here and then we'll get to you. 
Okay, um, would a business have some protections against something like this? If they could label it, I, I don't know what, but uh, I, the reason I say a business is because I've been working on thinking of myself as a business and, and doing a lot of stuff there. So could someone after the fact do something to make themselves into a business and, and give themselves some kind of legal power over the situation so they can then make the sites that have it up, pull it down? I don't think I don't think that a company or corporation would have any more rights to get an image taken down than the individual would. In fact, if we're looking at state laws for privacy and publicity outside the revenge porn, you you'd have to have the individual make that claim, or at least some agent of the individual make that claim on their behalf. So I, I don't think that that would be any material change. I mean, it, a, a company is just a person legally, and then it's just some other person. <laughs> Who's saying that you're naked pictures of this? So it's it's easier to just make that claim on your own. Uh, would it work better? I mean, this is just something I'm thinking of. Um, would it work better if we sort of extended right to publicity to people who aren't famous? Um, sort of said like, well, if there's a naked picture out there and you don't want people to see it anymore, you can just revoke that right and it has to be taken down. Like, uh, so you can't really, instead of going after the person that posted it, just sort of just saying that it's your photo because it's of you and like. If you didn't sign a consent form releasing it to the person who took the photo, then it still belongs to you, no matter who took it. So you do have the right of publicity, even as an individual, not a famous person. You can, so that is an option. Um, I think uh, you're kind of talking about the EU's right to forget law, um, which allows you to affirmatively remove things from the internet. And if you, if you look into some of the discussions around that, that presents its whole other set of problems. For example, this is a photo uh, of you in a public place, say at a, a hearing or a uh, you know lobbying or something. Um, it's allowed to be up there; it's protected by the First Amendment. So, you know, it's possible, but we'd have to balance the the First Amendment with that. So, that along that line, what what is if a website has a naked picture made, just ignoring criminal of whoever posted it or whatever, it, just forgetting that? What is the legal tool that you would use to get them to take it down? What I would, I mean, what I would do is is immediately report to the website that that's up there without your permission. The problem is, you know, whether that has any effect because we come down to the question of, does your state have a revenge porn law? Does that apply? Does your state have a right of privacy law that applies? Is it your picture? Do you own the copyright? Right. Um, so the the. The remedy is to, to tell the website to take it down. Most websites will do that because that's how they protect their safe harbor, right? I mean, the, the, the truth is if there's a, a, a claim of an IP violation, they're going to go ahead and take that down because that's how they stay under the DMCA safe harbor. So that's your, your, your first remedy. But as I said earlier, that can be whack-a-mole. Um, but the, the best answer is familiarize yourself with the laws of your state look at what your state has for revenge porn laws or, or, or you know, sharing naked picture laws, uh, but also look at what your rights of privacy or publicity are or, or, or contact a lawyer. But it, it really does start with find out where they are, tell that website to take them down, see if that works. So what's the difference if I had a bad hair day and I don't want that picture up? If it's copyright infringement, file that DMCA notice. Right. If it's your picture, <laughs> that's exactly but right. It's not. It's not. Well, <laughs> if, 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 if it's not your copyright and it's, it's just a bad hair day, you probably aren't going to take it down. But if it's not your copyright and you've got a website who doesn't care too much about your right of privacy or publicity, then you're probably not going to get the naked picture taken down either. You're going to have to take some other steps. So the difference is that when you're naked, you know, it, it's, it's something that, that most – most people take a different view on and and you know a lot of websites unless they're focused directly on you know putting up pictures of naked people are going to take those down i mean even your 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 you know reddit's imgers and things like that they're going to come down because it's just not worth dealing with the hassle so when we're talking about the consequences of revenge porn or non-consensual imaging posting or however we're terming it Really, there's kind of the two issues we keep coming back to. One is the issue of, I'm going to say, uh, colloquially, social standing, public embarrassment. The other is the more tangible risk of financial consequences, losing your job, being fired, et cetera. 
what is the avenue for pursuing um, legality or sanctioning such that these cannot be grounds for dismissal it cannot be part of your performance appraisal it cannot be the reason you can be dismissed especially for the two types of positions that we tend to hear about the most um, I'm going to say like uh, healthcare workers nurses physicians etc and school teachers in that most hospitals, public health organizations, school systems are funded by public monies and so don't have some of the same luxuries for hiring and firing employees that private companies do. How can you go, would it be an option to look at making it such that these things cannot be grounds for dismissal because they're not part of the performance appraisal for the position? I would argue that either that consensually made uh, adult materials that mm -hmm. then get redistributed um, are protected speech and um, are protected if you're a public employee. Um, now whether or not that holds is, is something the lawyers have to fight out. But what what she does on, on her cam is protected free speech. And as, as long as it doesn't cause a material disruption if she, say, was a social worker, um, she, sh she could not be punished for that. Um, what now? Oh, she, she, she's a social worker. <laughs> um, now, whether in real life, you know, this is all theoretical. In real life, that doesn't always happen. Um, but maybe some big cases, some strategic cases need to be brought. Did you want to? I mean, in a lot of ways for me, the thing is for me in, in this conversation, um, I don't, as a person who could be on the end of revenge porn, it doesn't affect me in much the same way that other people would be affected. Um, yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm finishing up my social work bachelor's, but my focus is going to be on working with like the poly kinky communities and also with like sex work and like HIV positive communities, all these like different groups that if I had a naked photo out there, it wouldn't be the end of my career, right? Um, but there are, in a lot of ways, there are other people that are affected much, much stronger. And um, I mean, and to that end, like it, it's a fear, I think, in a lot of ways um, that you just sort of have to like, when I put naked photos on the internet and I worry that it's going to affect my life somehow, it is the same sort of fear as why I keep uh, pepper spray on my keychain when I go out for a run at night. Like, <laughs> it's that same sort of, like, this thing is always looming over my shoulder, even if it's not necessarily a huge risk for me. And, and just to, to, to go to the legal core of the question, I mean, as far as, again, the societal change that ought to come to get us to that point mentally is, is, is something that we can't legislate, but hopefully we'll get to. Uh, but in terms of the idea of drafting some legislation that says that I can't fire an employee under certain circumstances, that's going to be even harder to write than these revenge porn acts are going to be. Because the, the ability to hire and fire employees, uh, you know, is something that it, 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 to be so narrowly tailored to be to be able to be protect people from things that 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 shouldn't cost them their jobs, but allow me to still hire and fire employees for you know whatever reason applies to my job. Um, yeah, that's a that would be a nightmare of drafting. Yeah, I think I do think we need some good cases to shore up public employee rights on mm -hmm. this issue. Yeah. Um, so, if, but I think we have a question. Um, my question is about uh, threats. So I run, I help run a company for a group of girls who stream video games, and several of them who have had threats to be hacked for photos and other things. Nothing has come to fruition, thank God, but my question is how exactly, how serious is that threat taken um, that, oh, I'm going to hack you and ruin your reputation? <coughs> is, that, is that even a threat that's taken seriously at this point? In Georgia, which is the only state I have any experience to say in, um, in Georgia, if I don't share your picture, I haven't violated the, 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 you know, the picture sharing criminal act. If I don't actually hack you, I haven't violated the Computer Crimes Act. And the threat of, of hacking, I, the threat of activity, I don't think is going to arise to any type of 
again, we're looking at what the police will do, you know, and not not what the there, there's really not a civil remedy. The what the police would do to to protect that probably not. Now there are injunctions, there are restraining orders, and if you can show that this threat is you know serious enough or phrased seriously enough or with someone who has the the capacity to follow through on it you could probably get a restraining order or an injunction against that person but it's not it, 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 they're not going to go to jail for that necessarily you just get a get a claim that they can't you and, and that any is, other experience than i do and that assumes you know who they are right and you can get jurisdiction on them um uh yeah it's tough just with the threats um you know, the thing is, is, if they do follow through on it, it might show conspiracy, you yeah. know, so they, they could get in worse trouble. Um, but uh, it's tough just by itself. Um, you know, it's very important to have good personal IT policies, two-factor authentication, encrypt everything, um, you know, in your day-to-day -day life. Um, there's lots of steps you can take to protect yourself that aren't too invasive, um, but I recommend everyone take them. Yeah. Hey. Um, so, I just kind of want to play devil's advocate. Uh, disclaimer: I am a good guy. But exactly, what are the most effective ways that people are getting away with it? And how can we? What are they doing? What kind of tactics are they implementing? So that way, we know the big pain points on how to defend against those kinds of incidents. Well, the. I mean, how they're getting away with it is we can't pass a law that seems to work. So we can't we can't stop the activity because every state's got some law that's got some giant loophole in it. It seems, um, or they or they've decided not to enforce them so that because they're so unconstitutionally broad, or we're getting challenges, rightly so. Right? We haven't even discussed the First Amendment issues here, or the or the newsworthiness, or any of those other things that come along, that are a real real stumbling block on these laws. So. The, the, the truth is that people are getting away with it fairly easily because it's hard to it's hard to stop and it's hard to criminalize and it's hard to have a law that actually works uh, you know even the states that have revenge porn laws and are actively enforcing them which is not as, as many as, as, as we started with 34 uh, but it's it, it, they, they don't have remedies for all situations so how do you protect yourself I mean how do you keep your stuff safe? I guess the 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 abstinence answer is don't send naked pictures yourself to anybody. But the oh the, man, I want to throw water on you. So I, I know I'm not saying that's the right <laughs> answer. I'm just saying that's the that's the abstinence only answer. But that's the that's the true answer. How do you keep your naked pictures from getting out there? Don't take naked pictures. But what do you do? What do you what do you do to protect yourself? Here's here's the advice we gave you four years ago when we first did this. and There were no laws. Take your pictures yourself. Only share selfies because then you own the copyright. Don't put your face in it. That's it. That's that's the best advice I've got for you. Only share pictures that you took and that don't identify you. And when I say don't put your face in it, also don't wear your name badge or <laughs> you know have your home address. Don't be in front of your mailbox when you do it or what. It, just keep identifying features to a minimum. But I now expect everyone to tweet me a photo of them naked wearing nothing but their badge because that's. All I'm gonna see all weekend now. Thank you for that. It's day one for me. I'm really. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. All right. I think we're wrapping it up here. Yeah. yeah. I think we're we're getting flagged down. So so you don't get to hear about the First Amendment issues, but trust me, there's a lot Google of them, it. and they're 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 great. But Google yeah, it. go read it. <laughs> <laughs>